All right, council member, it is now noon. We've been joined by all four of our nominees um, as attendees. I will notify you if any of your colleagues join. Um, they have not done so yet. Um, we are now live on YouTube. You may begin when you're ready. Good afternoon. I'm Robert White, council member at large and chair of the Committee on Government Operations and Facilities. Today is Thursday, December 8th, 2022, and we're meeting remotely via the Zoom teleconferencing platform. The time is now 12 o'clock p.m., and I'm calling to order this public roundtable of the committee. Today, we're reviewing four proposed resolutions, PR 24-1002, the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizen Affairs Clarence Johnson Confirmation Resolution of 2022, PR 24-1003, the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs Dominic Henry Confirmation Resolution of 2022, PR 24-1004, Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs John Matthews Confirmation Resolution of 2022, and PR 24-1005, the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs Natasha Dasher Confirmation Resolution of 2022. The Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs, or Commission, was established to advise the Mayor, the Council, and the Director of the Office of Returning Citizens Affairs on the process, issues, and consequences of the reintegration of returning citizens into general population. The Commission consists of 15 public voting members appointed by the Mayor. Members may be reappointed, but cannot serve more than three consecutive full terms. The law requires that voting members be appointed with due consideration for significant representation from the returning citizen community. To this point, I want to note a letter that both I and Councilmember Henderson sent to the Office of Returning Citizens Affairs, noting a need to appoint more women who are returning citizens to the commission. Among other things, the commission is required to meet monthly and to submit an annual report on its recommendations to the mayor, the council, and the office on returning citizens affairs. All four of these resolutions would be deemed approved on February 8th, 2023, unless a resolution of disapproval is introduced. This roundtable and the public record we've opened is intended to give an opportunity for feedback from any interested members of the public to provide a forum to address our questions and to inform the council's decision to either allow these reappointments to move forward or to file a disapproval resolution. Uh, now to our uh, the four resolutions before us. 24-1002 would reappoint Clarence Johnson's, Johnson, a Ward 8 resident and a public voting member of the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs for a term to end August 4th, 2025. According to the materials received by the committee, Mr. Johnson is a returning citizen who now advocates for the education and workforce development needs of those who are working to successfully reintegrate into the community. Mr. Johnson has worked ex work experience in quality assurance, computer applications, and industrial maintenance. He has certificates in, in entrepreneurship, financial systems, real estate, and computer applications. Additionally, Mr. Johnson is attending Fair State University. PR 24-1003 would reappoint Dominic Henry, a Ward 8 resident and public voting member of the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs, for a term to end August 4th, 2025. According to the materials received by the committee, Mr. Henry is also a returning citizen. He serves as a FBOP community liaison. In that capacity, he delivered speeches to prison leadership detailing his 35 years of incarceration, transformation, and unique perspective on reentry and public safety. He also leveraged this position to improve incarcerated citizens' engagement with social service programs and CBO accountability partners. Mr. Henry also provided executive management through uh, training through the Young Men Incorporated Leadership Training Academy, which he piloted at the Federal Correction, Correctional Institution in Cumberland, Maryland. Mr. Henry also worked as a program coordinator in the Office on Returning Citizens Affairs, or ORCA. In that capacity, he managed ORCA's electrician program for at-risk men age 18 to 30 years old in Ward 8 and recruited people to coordinate Safe Passage, a district initiative that entails ensuring safe transportation for students to and from schools. 
Mr. Henry completed the correspondence program with the University of Illinois at Urbana Industrial uh, Organization Psychology College and received additional education from CETA Bookkeeping Assistant Program. PR 24-1004 would also reappoint John Peter Bug Matthews, a Ward 6 resident, as a public voting member of the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs for a term to end August 4th, 2024. Matthews has over 20 years of experience as a youth and returning citizen community advocate. Mr. Matthews is the owner of Peter Bug Shoe Academy. Through this academy, Mr. Matthews has provided returning citizens with pathways to employment and business ownership. I've been a customer there myself and appreciate his incredible work. Mr. Matthews previously managed neighborhood youth programs and was a DCPS teacher where he provided youth hands-on experience to develop shoe leather technology skills. He also managed a youth neighborhood program under the Neighborhood Planning Council. Mr. Matthews received a Bachelor of Science in Sociology from Federal City College. Last but not least, PR 24-1005 would reappoint Natasha Dasher, a Ward 6 resident, as the new chair of the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs for a term to end August 4th, 2025. Ms. Dasher is currently the acting chair of the commission through Mayor's Order 2022. 2-161. I've already benefited from Ms. Dasher's leadership, advice, and advocacy in her new role. Ms. Dasher is a returning citizen who has over 20 years of experience growing businesses. She currently works for the Department of Energy as a program analyst. In this capacity, among a host of tasks, Ms. Dasher plans and coordinates support service requirements and monitors organizational mission and program changes to assess changing requirements for support services. Ms. Dasher is also a local advocate who supports her community through mentorship on business development and operational strategy. She received a degree in business administration from Delaware State University. In advance of this roundtable, the committee sent the nominees a series of standard written questions and are in the process of collecting the last responses to those questions. Uh, before we uh, hear from our witnesses, I want to lay out the ground rules. Everyone should have received a copy of the witness list yesterday. Uh, we, we don't have public witnesses today, only the nominees. Uh, so we will hear from them shortly. They will all read their uh, statements, and then I will pose questions. And if my colleagues join, uh, they will pose questions as well. For our nominees, um, you will soon be promoted uh, to become a witness. When you're promoted, you'll drop out of the hearing momentarily and come back in as a panelist. We will go in the order on the agenda. So with that, let me call up our panel of witnesses, which I closed. So you'll have to give me a quick moment. All right, uh, I would like to call up Clarence Johnson, Dominic Henry, John Matthews, and Natasha Dasher. Clarence Johnson, are you with us? Can you turn on your camera? <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, welcome in, uh, Clarence Johnson. You can begin your testimony when you're ready. Good afternoon, Council Member Walton. The Federal Government Operations. My name is Chris Johnson. I'm honored to be appointed to the Commission on Re and Returning Citizens Affairs. 
Thank you to committee holding this hearing and Mayor Bowser for nominating me for the term. I am a native Washingtonian, Washingtonian who has strived to become a shine light to let people know they too can succeed after education. I've been home since 2011. That's um, 11 years. I have just focused on improving my tech technical skills, maintaining consistent employment, and taking advantage of work development programs and educational services to navigate our entry. I have also used my story to advocate for other people in incarceration who come out of prison and want to do the right thing. For the past four years, I have worked as a care assistant at hospitals and a, ner a nurse and patient sitter at United Medical Center Hospital for the past three years. I'm currently pursuing my CompTIA A plus ID certificate through Community College Preparatory Academy and earned the status of valedic valedictorian in a construction program offered by Congress Community and Development Corporation. I also involved with several other workforce development programs such as life enhancement services and we fit see and programs such as these allow me to network and access mental and physical health resources these programs have been crucial in providing me with support and mentorship and have placed me in a position to learn more about that offer that other turn of citizens face in re entering society. They have also helped mentor others. In addition, I formerly served on the board of community college Academy, which empowered adult students to do education and career training. I'm also proud to share I am in the process of building my own photography business called Exclusive Shots by CJ Photography. Through my growing business, I have been able to send friends, family, and loved ones who are incarcerated pictures to take minds away from their current conditions and look forward to the future. I have been doing this since my release, and this is something I am passionate and dedicated to doing continuously. As a long-time resident of War and a return citizen myself, I believe I have a unique answer to the needs of obstacles faced by returned citizens east of the river and throughout the city. My past lies in community advocacy and truly highlighting the needs so that so they stay on the right path. Since serving on the commission, I have worked to connect returned citizens with much needed resources through access transportation, food, security, housing stability. I also heard this is gain employment and have advocated to restore the vote of people like me who are disproportionately affected by incarceration. If I am confirmed to serve another term on the commission, I continue to advocate for Washington, D.C.'s return to citizens, community, with the goal of removing more obstacles of reentry so that people can succeed in life after incarceration. It is my purpose and passion to amplify the voices of return assistance in the policy making process, shed light on the diverse needs of return citizens, and tell the recommendations of the committee to meet the individual needs of formerly incarcerated individuals. My goal is always, my goal is to always aim to inspire. Thank you once again for your consideration. I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Johnson. For, uh, when we get to questions, we may, your internet connection was was tough. We could make out what you were hearing, but it was it was difficult. We may need you to turn off your camera to answer questions, but we'll see if it improves um, 
uh, over the time that we do the yep. other. Those is kind of breaking. Those is breaking up too. Mm. Okay. Uh, um, our next uh, public witness is uh, Dominic Henry. Welcome. All right, you're on mute, sir. You hear me now? I can. All right, good afternoon, Chairman White. Good well, to see you. Good. Yeah. Um, and members of the of, of, and members of the Committee on Government Operations and Facilities and Staff. First and foremost, I would like to thank Mayor Miro Bowser for the honor of reappointing me to serve in this capacity. And also, I'd like to thank the city council for holding this hearing. My name is Dominic Henry. I am a native Washingtonian, business owner of Reentry Consultant Service, LLC. Currently, I'm working as a driver for UPS and co-lead a nonprofit organization aimed at reducing balance in some of the most underserved communities in Baltimore. My involvement with the criminal legal system began at age 20 and it lasted for 35 years. It consumed my prime years of my life. Unfortunately, my path to prison was an accident. The cycle of crime in prison was familiar, was a familiar one in my family and something that was prevalent in my community. My father, Roland Henry, died in prison in 1995 after serving 24 years. My father spent much of his life behind bars. As a matter of fact, the only photos I have are with my father in the visiting room of the United States Penitentiary in Marion, Illinois. Sadly, the same visiting room grew to feel like my own living room. It would be that same living room where my daughter referred to me as a monster when she saw me in shackles and handcuffs in an orange jumpsuit. As traumatic as that may have been, it was the catalyst of my transformation. It is because of this and my own son that will lead me to the commitment of being the father that I never had and the young men to the young men on the same path that I walked. While I was serving time in prison, neighborhoods from Oxen Hill to Fort Washington were locked in a 10 year game war. The conflict reached particularly close to home after my son was shot by a rival gang leader. During that same year, the conflict had resulted in an unprecedented level of gun violence and even spilled over to the halfway houses across the DMV. My family, my community were in need. So I began collaborating with law enforcement officials, community leaders who were focused on making a change. I'm sure that most of you remember the articles featuring the Lions Concerned Men, Walter Ridley, Reverend Tony Lee, and Glenn Ivey. I work very closely with them to build alliances with community partners, ultimately ensuring the safety of my son and other young men affected by this ongoing crisis. Ultimately, from my leadership, we created a community model of reconciliation based on conflict resolution. Within prison, I led diverse groups of inmates. This leadership proved instrumental in preventing lengthy prison lockdowns and violence. I was able to get the administration to open a recreation center, coordinate all sports league games and events, and create officiating schools and train new officials. All these things were positive, but I knew that the only way to see real change was to find a way to eradicate recidivism and change, change behavior so individuals would take more ownership in their communities and their country. I knew that education had to be in the forefront to realize any measurable change. As a result, I went about recruiting and educating influential residents to manage and run an organization using a business model structure. This attracted the worst of the worst of those at risk of those at risk of recidivating. I set up a program that created individual developmental plans for each participant to help them gain remarkable job skills, transform their criminal thinking and behaviors into socially acceptable norms. This led to the formation of a BP, BOP certified organization, Community Economic Development, CED, and Young Men Incorporated, YMI. It was comprised of a leadership training academy. In the six year period, the BOP credited our organization with increasing programming, decreasing incident reports, finding jobs for those for, for 160 individuals 
through community accountability partners and help six formerly incarcerated individuals open their own business, encouraging more than 2,000 inmates to complete adult continuing education. After being released, I began working with the DC Mayor Office of Returning Citizen Morka with the help of a friend who was formerly incarcerated. I went to work as a program coordinator on several community projects and public safety initiatives. One initiative was to provide supervision and safe passage to children going to or being dismissed from school. I was the one who suggested to use returning citizens to assist government workers. I co-coordinated the family outreach survey through which 50 families were identified by the District of Columbia as at risk for violence and having a need for social services. I met with families to assess their situations and present them with referrals for public service to obtain food, clothing, and housing assistance. Six months after my release, the Federal Bureau of Prisons presented me with a rare opportunity to return back to prison and that is inmate. But as someone who could speak to the BOP executive staff at their annual warden conference, the opportunity also allowed me to visit over 20 institutions to address the inmate population and to talk about my own journeys through educational program and reentry and how prisoners can play the most important role in enhancing public safety. As a result, I was contracted as the program coordinator and tasked with filming a documentary about my prison transformation and to create the federal certified inmate organization, Young Men Incorporated, I found it wild to find. If given the opportunity, I dream of further, further my mission calling in life through my work with the Commission Returning Citizens Affairs and Beyond. I believe that my background incarceration and work after being released from prison make me uniquely qualified for this appointment. I have received over 30 awards and recognition for my leadership in public safety reform, most notably the Nelson Mandela Award, Malcolm X Award, C. Sosa Citywide Reentry Assembly, FB Federal Bureau of Prisons Commendation for Saving Lives in the Prison System, to name a few. As a member of the Commission on Reentry and Return to Citizen Affairs, I look forward to studying ways to return it, studying ways that returning citizens can play a more active and pivotal role in public safety. Parental involvement plays a major factor in public safety reform, especially when most of the children are being raised by the social media culture. Walker can become the NFL of public safety reform. Returning citizens must have a role in repaying this debt to their communities. In conclusion, leadership matters. And because there is no positive leadership in the street or in the prison system, crime persists. Thank you for your consideration. I look forward to answering any of your questions you may have. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, John Peterbug Matthews, welcome. You can begin your testimony. You're on mute, so I'm not sure if you started speaking yet. Peter Bug, can can you hear me? Okay.
All right, you should see a notification asking you to unmute, or you can use the microphone. Are you using a computer? or a phone let me do this let me turn to natasha dasher peter bug um you you work on getting unmuted and we'll come back to you after natasha dasher all right i think we'll be able to we'll be able to get that worked out oh wait there we are peter bug there we are Okay, good. Okay. Welcome. Let me, let me, let me, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairperson White, and members and staff of, of the Committee on the Government and, and Facility. My name is uh, John Peter Bug Matthews. I'm a little nervous in this kind of situation because I normally don't even do this. But okay, I'm a resident of Ward 6. And I'd like to thank you all for holding this meeting and the mayor, Bowser, for nominating me for another term on the committee, on the commission on return. I like to say return citizens, but you know, maybe, you know, since we're starting off a new year, I think we might have to say the return neighbor. You know, I, I like to make sure, you know, the we on the committee or the return and neighbors citizens affair. Okay, I'm a, I'm a native Washingtonian, and I believe that everybody deserves a second chance, and at least have the way to way for a new path in life. Uh, serving youth in the community has been one of my mainstays of my career. I'm the, I guess I'm the founder and the owner of a program called the Peterburg Shoe Repair Academy, where we train young folks in and in, in, in return uh, neighbors in uh, shoe and leather design. Uh, sometimes in, in the shoe repair shop, you know, everybody think, you know, that the shoe repairman is just a, is just a boot black, a shoe shine man, you know, but in, in here, what we do, you know, we kind of like a, a religious organization. We save souls and we heal people. And that's what we're hoping, you know, that with our uh, uh, continuous working with the returned citizens, that we can bring some of some of our neighbors in, show, give them a trade, make sure they can understand the spirit of entrepreneurship, and then we uh, try to put them back in the community as as a business person. For the last 40 years, my academy has provided an opportunity for that. I, uh, uh, well, I, I worked in the DC public school system for over 28 years. I retired five years ago working with youth and um, young people who were returned citizens besides an adult. And um, we had a pretty good time. Everybody was learning the trade. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just fortunate that, you know, we have uh, been able to take what God has given us and share it back with young people, young adults and adults in the community. Being a graduate of Federal City College and majoring in sociology, uh, inspired us to me to be a concerned person because in sociology uh, it's it's called a social web. So in the social web, you know, we put the web up, folks attached to the web, and what we try to do is make sure that they leave out of the web or something that they can at least carry on throughout their life. Um, what we were talking about and thinking is that. You know, for our returned neighbors and our returned citizens, 
you know, you know, we might have to have a. Yeah, Hello. Right, the camera off. It's still Hello. Yeah. So what happened? Uh, you know, what we were talking about is that, you know, we don't manufacture anything in 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 Washington D.C. So we was thinking about making uh, a um, a a place where we can refurbish shoes for returned citizens and also refurbish shoes where uh, returned citizens can can open up places like uh, I guess would be uh, the Salvation Army where you can come in and, and, and buy a pair of shoes that's been refurbished by return citizens and plus they could make the money and then they become entrepreneurs themselves. Um, if there's any questions, I, I, I would be more than happy to answer them if it if, if, if be so. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we will have some questions. Uh, our final witness will be Natasha Dasher. Uh, welcome, Chairperson Dasher. Thank you, Council Member White. Good afternoon, members of the Committee on Government Operations and Facilities. Thank you for holding this hearing. Thank you also, Mayor Muriel Bowser, for this honorable nomination. My name is Natasha Dasher, and as a fourth generation Washingtonian, I am humbled at the opportunity to serve the returning citizens of the District of Columbia. Being educated in the Archdiocese of Washington and DCPS, I was fortunate through these experiences to gain a strong sense of obligation to community and service. Currently, I am employed with the Department of Energy and I find myself most fulfilled with being a public servant. I've held great positions with several large companies, including the Clark Construction Group, but even with these companies, I participated in Habitat for Humanities, Outreach, the Christmas in April Project, and the Capital Area Food Bank Drives. As a returning citizen myself, I would be an ideal candidate for the Commission on Reentry and Returning Citizens Affairs. I offer firsthand experience of the trials and tribulations that are faced upon release from incarceration. In addition, the female returning citizens are many times underserved. The needs of a woman are very different than those of a man, especially when being released from prison. Family reunification, mental health, and long-term stability plans are sometimes overlooked in the re-entry process, but are necessary to prevent the recidivism of the female returning citizen. My business acumen helped when navigating through transition to society, but it did not stop the denial of employment nor housing. In the past eight years since my release, I have successfully rebuilt my credit, participated in intense therapy, became a federal employee, and built a movement to bring awareness to the lack of resources for women and children who are affected by incarceration. I envision the commission as a resource for lawmakers when considering returning citizens' issues and a group of like-minded individuals whose common goal is the best interest of returning citizens. As a commissioner, I would like to spearhead legislation conversations that will provide data, services, and resources for women and children affected by incarceration. I would also like to create imaging and media campaigns that would empower positive depictions of returning citizens. If confirmed, I will demonstrate the integrity of the mission of this commission. I will represent the commission with the highest regard. The commission presently is a diverse group of very knowledgeable individuals. They are well-versed in the current immediate needs of returning citizens. Through my advocacy work, I have had the pleasure of working with several of them in different settings. So I see my addition as an easy transition. If confirmed, I look forward to adding to the diverse commission as a female returning citizen. My confirmation to this commission and firsthand institutional knowledge will make it a stronger, more inclusive and well-represented commission. Thank you for your consideration, and I welcome any questions you may have. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, this is uh, such an excellent panel of, of nominees. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I'll say, I said this last time, uh, Peter Bug came, uh, came up. Uh, they, you know, he has such a good reputation. My my first time uh, uh, going to Peter Bug's shop, they talked so highly of him. I took my worst shoes, these shoes that had spent years in rain and snow, 
and they sat under my bed because I thought they'd never be used again. And I just say, well, let me see what he can do with these. They look brand new when I got them back. It was crazy. Um, so um, if if Peter Bug is 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 able to keep you know, training people in this this skill, unfortunately, not a lot of people have now getting them out. Um, I, I think that there's a, a lot of business to be had and, and money to be made from these young people uh, who can acquire these skills. So um, I appreciate you saving souls, as you said. Um, but let me let me get into the more more serious stuff. This is um, I, I've worked with with all of you uh, in various capacities, and I, I know you'll work very well. Uh, <clears throat> specific to to the commission, um, it, let me ask uh, this. I haven't looked at the records yet. How, how is attendance from these from 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 each of you? Have you all been successful in in meeting making the majority of meetings? Um, 36 months I've been in this. I've missed two meetings, one due to COVID, um, and the other one was a pre-planned family vacation. Well, I had uh, mommy work with UPS, and I think you know the rigmarole of UPS. Me and the uh, last chairman, we had an agreement that I could call in because I'd be working at the time they had meetings. Like today, you know, I will be in Gaithersburg and I will call in, you know. Uh, okay. <clears throat> well, you know, the Peter Bug, uh, it, what happened? I had a uh, a heart attack, and I and I missed I missed several several meetings, you know. But I am uh, one thing, you know. God take care of babies, babies, fools, and monkeys. So I've been I, I I corrected all of that. So I'm 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 up and ready. All right. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Mr. Johnson. Hopefully, Mr. Johnson is still with us. Uh, if you can hear me, Mr. Johnson, jump in. Uh, I I'll keep um, asking questions, though. But if you can unmute yourself. So the commission currently meets once a month on the second Thursday of each month. Um, now meeting at Martha's table. Uh, so does that work for 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 everyone? And uh, Mr. Henry, recognizing that you you may be calling in uh, to many of the meetings. Yes. Excellent. Yes, it works. It works for me. Excellent. But I I I, I don't I talk to my supervisor and. Uh, he pretty much going to give me more leeway. But because of this is peak season, this is our peak season. I was about to say, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, after, after January, he, he told me that um, that once a month, he will make sure that um, that I will be able to attend the meetings. Excellent. As soon as I leave here, I got to put, put my, uh, my brown cape on. <laughs> I, I I know it. So let me let me try to move through. I don't want to hold you up because I figured the longer you're here, the later you'll be out tonight. So I, I appreciate um, you, you being with us. Um, I have uh, heard concerns. The commission is supposed to serve and advocate for uh, all returning citizens. One of the concerns I've had over the past uh, heard over the past couple of years is that the commission has not done as good a job identifying and, and supporting the needs of returning citizens who identify as women. Um, so can one or two of you speak to some of the needs? Well, uh, Ms. Dasher, we've had this uh, conversation. Uh, so if you wanna weigh in here, you certainly can, but you can also put it on these, uh, these gentlemen uh, if you'd like to, <clears throat> but I would like a couple of you to, to speak on the needs of uh, women returning citizens and how the commission can can better meet those needs or or better understand those needs. Ms. Ms. Dasher, do you want to start or do you want to? I, I was going to ask the gentleman now, Dominic and uh, Clarence know me very well, so they know exactly how what I'm saying. With them on the hot seat. So I'll let them go and then I'll follow up and, and figure out, They I'll fill them in when they're done. All right. I, I will. I will. Um, I want to chime in. I was. I would say. Um, 
so far we have some pretty um capable women already and i welcome even more so i mean it to me you have to have this diversity in dealing with this reentry thing my specialty you know what my specialty is my specialty is making sure the return of citizens give back in a positive way of stopping this crime in this city because this city mayor and yourself chairman deserve better and that that's my specialty because i just want to just just be out front with it and i let miss miss dasher <laughs> i let the chairman i let her i let her do her thing but yeah. that's gonna be that's yeah. that's gonna be my specialty yeah, I'm having a little internet uh, situation. Can y'all hear me now, Mr. White? We can. Thanks for uh, figuring this out. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can hear y'all now. I don't know if y'all can see me or not. But we I'm can't, but I'm that's here. but we can hear you, so that's most important. Okay. Clarence, before I go, um, did you want to make a comment regarding women um, and how we could better, we as the commission, could better serve um, the women or better advise Morka or the mayor and the council on um, women's issues regarding to re-entry. Do you have anything that you want to add before I go on my tangent? Um, uh, help, we, we need to have uh, more, um, I believe, just like reaching out, having more community events, things of that nature. I can't really hear y'all. Can y'all hear me? We, we can hear you. Okay, bet. Yeah, so. Well, Ms. thank Dash you, gentlemen. Can... Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Peterbuck. Hello. Yes, yes. I like. I like to say something. Yes. Please. You know, right. I, 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 I believe. You know. You know. We probably in the past have not had that. That, that that input, you know, you know, for women. But also, I like I like to add on, you know, what we what we probably also need is called a it's called a referral booklet, and 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 the referral booklet is that if you are a returned citizen, then that means if you help the plumber out, that means that the commission should be able to get you into should be able to get you into a a plumber's uh apprentice program if you if you held the uh uh the pliers for the for the electrician you know we should be able to like you know, have a referral booklet of how many people that's coming home what did they do did they did they did they did they, did they participate in the program did they have some training can we extend their training you know, just like the women, if, if there was a thing where women, you know, whatever the woman has done, you know, being incarcerated, then what can we do as a commission to make sure that we we can we can uh, at least move them all on to the next phase of coming home and being a neighbor? It's called a referral book. You know that I, I think I think we might need to find out, you know, you know, how many people you know, who's coming home and, and if they're coming home with a skill or they don't have a skill, at least we can refer them to that. Thank you. Thank you. And Chairman uh Chairman Natasha. Uh, I would I would I think if it, it has to start, we have to go to them women women prisons and visit them. It has to start there. We have to go to the women prisons and visit them because I have a little experience with that. And I know how lonely them women are in them prisons. Most of them don't get no visits. And I think that should be a start um, that we should, you know, come up with ways to make sure they can get visits. All right, Ms. Dasher, um, I know you have thoughts on that. And I have a, a, a slight angle on that question that I want to make sure I have time to ask you as well. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Um, Ms. Terry, let me ex let me explain why the visiting halls are a little uh, less than the men's facilities. 
And that is because visitation for a woman and her child and to hear the child cry when they leave is something that you will never understand. I, I'm nine years and my child was a junior in college and I just got chills thinking about the moment she left me um, after my first visit. It is, I can't imagine, I had to sit and console many women from many days and hours after visitation, weeks at a time, and they didn't want to put their children through that. And so those are the differences of the male and female experience. Um, and so, yes, we, I do believe I have advised Morka to include the commission um, for the past two years. And of course, due to COVID and due to the FBOP lockdowns, we have been uh, unable. But I do believe that as commissioners, we should be included in those visits um, to the district residents across the US. Um, I think they need to know who we are and what we do. Um, and to let them know that someone is fighting for them on a legislative side. I think we sometimes as a population get caught up in um, what we see on the news and sometimes what we see um, as important deemed by our individual experience and not thinking of all inclusivity. So when I say that, meaning I think about men when I think about the workforce, that all of you are not construction made men, right? All of you are not designed to be construction workers, but yet 95% of the workforce development programs that are geared and targeted for returning citizens are construction-based and trade-based programs. Um, I say the same thing, but even as a woman, I can't fight for your needs when all I see is the same jobs I have as a woman. Um, they're either customer service. I came home with a bachelor's degree and over 25 years of managing um, portfolios of up to millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet I got no's. I got walked out of a job in the District of Columbia that banned a box because I they when I came back, my background came back. And this was for a simple administrative position that I was well overqualified for. But because I was a two-time felony con convicted person, I still got walked out and got told back. So these are the barriers that we both face but they're different experiences. And so I believe that the commission has, and it comes from the lack of representation, um, lack of, um, and that's in all areas, not just the commission and any type of leadership uh, role when it comes to us, um, when you look at the wardens when, in the BOP, when you look at the DOC, how many women are captains, how many women are, um, have been head of correctional facilities throughout our city that can have an impact and understand the walk experience. So um, Council Member White, all of y'all know I can spend hours on this. We can argue about it, Dominic later and Clarence later and Mr. Peterbuck can't wait to meet you. Um, Cause you know that I just, I love you all and I love your passion for what we do. We have a common goal, but we have to start remembering our women and our children. Thank you, Council Member White. Yeah, uh Mr. Um, Mr. White, this, this is yeah. fine. I understand my, uh, I wanted to re uh, say my uh, entry again because I know y'all had trouble hearing me, if that's oh, not a problem. We, no, we, we could hear it. It's just that it was, um, it, it, it was, it was difficult. We, we, we were able to hear it though. No, okay. Well, I was told that y'all couldn't really hear me. It, it was difficult. I would have stopped you if we couldn't hear you, uh, but we could hear you, but it, but it was it was difficult and I wanted to make sure we could clear it up. We also have your written testimony, uh, so, uh, so it's on the record in multiple ways. But while, while I have you, um, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, as a native Washingtonian and returning citizen who's made it a priority to take advantage of the many programs offered by the district, what gaps in needs for returning citizens have you observed and, and like how did you work um how have you worked through with the commission to identify those needs and, and fill some of those gaps uh, me personally um maintaining just maintaining constant constant avenues to program constantly building yourself Constantly um, working towards goals, 
always just um, striving to be better. So that's my that's my take. Uh, a lot, you know, I think you know with Mayor Bowser, uh, we have a lot of programs out here that can help with current sessions. And we have to really get the information out here to returning citizens that is so much help in the city. Um, a lot of other states uh, don't have the type of help that Washington, D.C. Um, has. So from, from walking experience, if you continue to seek resources, uh, resources such as, like I spoke in my uh, bio, um, LES, Life, uh, what's that? Uh, life Enhancement Services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We Fit DC Service. That's the Life Enhancement Service. They deal with mental health. Uh, mental health is real out here in 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 in, in the streets. Uh, we as a people sometimes we feel the shame to seek mental health treatment. Uh, but there should be no shame in that. Um, also, We Fit DC, they, they offer physical, uh, keeping your uh, physical body together, those things of that nature. So it's so many programs out here that can help. I went through so many different programs and they just, uh, to occupy your mind, to keep building yourself, to keep, uh, those are things that I, I would suggest like, find a way to get the information to return the citizens prior to their release. And that's to strengthen and help them tremendously. And um, are, are there, are, are the, are there ways that we can make the programs that exist? You mentioned we do have a lot of programs. Are there, are there ways that we can make those programs more accessible for returning citizens? The thing that I do, I reach back to return citizens on a weekly, monthly basis by uh, uh, sending pictures in and stuff like that. So my suggestion would be to reach out to the prison system, especially for those that uh, have release dates within the next couple of years, and try to get that information to them, find a way to get the information to our um, soon to be released um, citizens or returning citizens. And that way they can have a, like, before I even came home, I had my uh, social security or my, my just, just everything was just already set up, but you gotta take initiative and step to those opportunities immediately. Yeah. One more quick question for you in particular, because you, you worked uh, hard to advocate to restore voting rights for uh, people who are incarcerated. And of, of course, thanks to the work of you and, and a number of other returning citizens, uh, we were able to pass a, a bill that, that I wrote a few years ago that grants all incarcerated DC residents the right to vote. Um, but we do still have barriers to um, our incarcerated residents voting. What 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 barriers do you think residents are facing that make it a challenge to either vote or register to vote? Um, I think the challenge is that a lot of um, the citizens in general, not just returning citizens, but citizens that's not return it, but they um, have a tendency to just um, give up on the vote, but they got to understand that our vote is powerful. Um, for just, for instance, you just look at what happened in Georgia. Uh, Herschel Walker, oh my, <laughs> oh well, we know how that turned out. <laughs> Could have been worse. Vote, voting is very important, and I, I believe that we as returning citizens can um, just get out there and, 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 and advocate that, that your vote has meaning, even while you're still incarcerated. That's a blessing that many people are still able to vote 
even while incarcerated. And we got to get those, you know, some type of information to the people that are that are incarcerated to let them know that their vote still matters, that they, they can still vote and they can still make a difference in society, even while incarcerated with just their vote alone. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, let me let me turn to uh, Dominic Henry. Um, you um, you worked for uh, Morka for some time, as as you mentioned. Um, can you describe your experience while you were staff at Morka, and and whether you believe the commission and Morka uh, have historically worked well together? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, uh, because. I was in Morka at that time. Um, I like to say, start off, leadership matters. And because of the type of person I am, I was able to energize Morka. We was hitting the ground running. We was out, uh, we started the electrician program. I started that. And um, you had a different feel then because you, because people, um, came to Morka because they could identify, and the term I want to use is connectivity. This explained everything we just got through talking about connectivity. As far as voting, as far as um, how Morka is run, if, if, if when people come into Morka and they see somebody such as myself, such as Natasha, somebody that they that that they know and respect that connectivity is what they need if they can't identify with nothing they it's it's like what's the use and i just i don't want to throw no curveballs i just want to be very direct you know you, we had a lot of connectivity at that point the commission um tony lewis i think was was the chair at that point we had a lot of connectivity because people could identify with us but we had a director that was at odds with um you know the powers of be so a lot of things got stifled so i just want to i want to set that out to answer your question um leadership matters and i think everybody know where i'm going with that you know, leadership matters. That's that's the connectivity. That's why I I really voted for Natasha. Because the connectivity. She's a leader. You know, and 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 I, and outgoing chairman. Uh, that guy was phenomenal. And by me coming to the commission, that put a little bit more gravitas with it. And I'm just the difference now is that people call me all the time i wish i could have <laughs> show you the law they can't identify with nothing in walk at this point i'm just being real yeah and 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 that's to me is is the root of, of everything now if, if you don't have the leadership you don't have that connectivity you got nothing yeah uh, let me let me ask you about something a little different, I, and I really appreciate the the answer on that question. Um, I mean, one one of the things that we, we're seeing in the news every day is gun violence um, and uh, concerns about public safety. Um, and you you've you've done some real work here. Um, do you have thoughts on what you think the district might be doing wrong? in terms of addressing gun violence? Um, again, leadership matters. Um, when you have the right leadership, it cuts right through the BS. And let me just give you an example. Um, I like to use that situation, uh, this situation when, and, and I think it was 2003, Remember a lot of people was getting killed in the halfway houses? Mm -hmm. um, that got me and Tony Lewis Sr. stopped that. Because yeah. we are leaders. We went and asked them guys, if you got a beef with somebody out there, let us know. 
And what we did was we used our resources in a positive way. And some guys, you know, couldn't squash the beast, so we advised them to go ahead and move to Baltimore, go move to New York. And some of the beasts we could squash. So I'm, I'm just asking your question with, especially with the gun balance. If you have credible people in these positions, they will get to the bottom of a lot of this stuff. We have extraordinary problem, so you need extraordinary people to help get rid of that problem. You can't use average ordinary people to get rid of a extraordinary problem. I'm just, I just got to be real, man. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. Yeah. And 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 the gun balance in in um, I can just take my area where I'm at. You know, like I be out in the boat. I talk to people. And a lot of, and, and if you have that type of leadership, giving people another way of doing things and they respect you. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just it in a nutshell. Anything else, you know, and, 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 I, and, and especially with, with, with us. And this is my biggest, this is why I'm going so hard now. I'm making my voice a little bit more vocal. Some people are going to be mad, but I don't care. Returning citizens, like guys that's coming out now. I mean, a lot of these guys coming out now got that gravitas. And you got to get them before they get out. You get them before they get out and give them what you call that community mind, because that's one thing about my program that everybody loves. I was able to prove, I was able to stop a lot of gun violence from prison because it adopted rock structure. And these are, that's the connect, I'm gonna say it, connectivity. Connectivity is, is the theme right now. And what I mean by that is, most of your people in the street with guns got a connectivity with people in prison. That's the thing that a lot of people just missing. You have to have that prison connectivity to the street if, if we are gonna stop this violence. And that's the that's we in DC we got we got the political will, we got the money, we have all sorts of talent, but that one thing that's missing is that connectivity with prisons, and that's that's what you know my specialty was. I convinced the Justice Department, BOP, they seen the vision, they they respected it. I was able to prove in Philadelphia. Baltimore, New York, New Jersey, that when you involve us, you can stop a lot of this stuff. That's why I'm I'm really, you know, I got me in the meeting last week, I told the chairman, I said, Chairwoman, you can I want to focus on this. That's what I want to focus on. I I appreciate that. That that is helpful. Let let me do this. Uh I'm gonna turn to uh Peter Bug. Uh, Mr. Henry, I don't want to hold you up. So if you if you have to to get going to go to work, um, I, I I'd be happy to let you uh, excuse yourself at this point. No, I I, I couple of more minutes. All, all right, all right, <laughs> couple of more minutes. Um, no, my my boss. Um, I'm just going to do the I'm going to do the airport run tonight. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to take I got to take the stuff to Dallas, pick stuff up from Burtonville. So I'm gonna be. We already got it planned now. Um, you know, my day has been planned, you know. Okay, excellent. You you you're a big guy. I feel like you got one trip each time from the truck. You 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 can carry all the boxes. So <laughs> you, you'll be good on time. Um, Mr. Matthews, um, so um I think you're you're the only nominee today who's who's not a return of citizen. You you've done a lot of work with return of citizen, citizens over the years. Can you share how you think your background has helped uh, the commission and will continue to help the commission moving forward? Uh, hold on a second. Sure. Well, uh, wait a minute. Phone. Oh. Uh -oh. Charlie. Hello, can you hear me? 
We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Um, well, you know, what happened is that, you know, not not just not being a returning citizen or someone who's been incarcerated, you know, I had I had people in my family, you know, who've been incarcerated, you know. So, you know, either you you do time with them. So that means, you know, I'm I'm like, you know, the whole time my brother was incarcerated, you know, you know, the our family did the time with him. You know, he did he did the stitch at Lord, he did the stitch at a, a a youth center. And uh, some folks, you know, some of the older guys that probably know my brother, his name was Julie. And, uh, you know, um, you know, so we, you know, so being, being with that, you know, you know, the my background and not being a returned citizen, but I was a family and a victim of, of being a part of a returned citizen. So, you know, so we, you know, that's probably why, you know, we went directly to trying to help folks to, you know, you know, you know, when they come home, you know, so they could have at least a place where they could work and uh, become, uh, I guess, respectable citizens when they get back. So, uh, you know, so right, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a returned citizen, but I'm, I'm, I'm I've been the victim of it and, and, and sometimes when you work with children, you know, some of my children that I work with, you know, who who now, you know, who who's been incarcerated, who's who just been coming home. I had one little guy, you know, who did 35 years. Uh, and I saw him on Peter Bugs Day last year. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so now we have him in our program trying to make sure, you know, that, you know, you know, he doesn't return back again and, and try to get him a little trade, you know, so he can make him some money for him and his family. Hmm. Um, sort of uh, along those lines that you work with young people, you work um, with DCPS. Uh, do, do you believe that the commission should or could partner with DYRS uh, which, for those who don't know, incarcerate our, our youth uh, to address some of the needs of, of youth who are criminal justice involved. Uh, uh, look here, you know, you know, the any time we take we take people from the family, you know, one organization should, should be able, you know, to help out each other. You're right. I, I believe, I believe, at least across across the curriculum or whatever it is, across the board, we also have a communication where. If, if if one one person or one phase of the family is is gone, then that means the other part, you know, should be able to help out. You know, we should be able, you know, to help each other out. You know, some some kind of way. Because if not, then what we're going to be doing is is, is be grow a uh, grow a a a pattern where from juvenile return and then there'll be adult return. So we got to put some kind of uh alternative uh, motion in there where, you know, we at least, you know, we're on the same path of helping each other out, you know, so we can at least eliminate, you know, some of the uh, the problem of, you know, our young people, you know, being uh, incarcerated. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate that. Let me, let me, let me turn back to Ms. Dasher and here's <clears throat> where I was going to ask a different version of, of the other question is is one thing for us to sort of um, have an idea of what types of things we need to do differently. You, you've you been an expert on that. It's one thing to have women at the table. It's a different thing to make sure we've created an environment where the voices, the needs of women are getting prioritized. What do you think we need to be looking at in terms of how the commission operates as a body or how the commission listens uh, to constituents that will push us to listen to uh, women returning citizens more and hear more from uh, uh, those returning citizens? Thank you for that. That is um, actually one going to be one of our, re our recommendations for this this coming um, oversight. So I don't want to give you too much of that, but 
um, mainly the biggest thing is that, again, having someone, a perspective in a leadership decision-making role. One thing about the commission is that we only advise and recommend. Um, and we can't advise and recommend we can only give you the recommendations and then see what comes of that, right? Um, so we have to, if it's, I feel that like data, for example, I think if we had data to back those recommendations, then policymakers are able to look at them very differently. Because we don't have any data or um, I'm not gonna say any, we have the Center for Policy, um, CCI, we have, uh, but that's really our only primary source of data um, that comes that is that will align with policymakers for you to understand the number of people that something is affecting them. Um, so that's again, making sure we have data, making sure that even in the commission that we even to work up, we I you know I have to agree with uh, Commissioner Henry on the fact that it has to be an open a, a give and take that if we expressed, we've expressed for three years, our need to have a contact. I've, I've expressed this to you with the Federal Bureau of Prisons, um, that we don't have that ability. The only ability that the commission has to be able to have contact with BOP it, or even DOC is through MORCA. Um, and if we don't have a leader who believes in the commission mm -hmm. or believes that if we are, can identify the needs of those people that are incarcerated or that population, that we can help them, it doesn't work. It just becomes our recommendation and it goes into, not, it goes into la la land. Um, and so that's really been why some of these uh, recommendations become lofty ideas. I know we try with your, uh, re your transition committee to give you ideas that are really like they might be heavy lifts, but they're doable. Um, and we got the Parent and Children Act out. Again, Morca has not done one campaign um, for that. We haven't seen anything that has been geared um, towards that. And so, again, that's not to talk about. It's just talking about how do we do this? How do we change? How do we make the change and shift paradigm to where some of these things are actually getting done? We, the commission, absolutely either need more authority um, or and or we need the leadership of Morca to be on board with us. Um, let me go in a, a different direction. The um, you, you mentioned actually in your remarks earlier, you, you mentioned your, your business acumen. You also mentioned uh, issues around employment. Often returning citizens struggle with getting jobs that match their uh, skill set, intelligence, work ethic. Uh, how can the district better support returning citizens who are frankly, often only getting jobs that they are overqualified for? How, how can we better support uh, returning citizens and getting the jobs that, that they want and, and often deserve? So I love to use the CBE program, right? Because again, I'm a mentor. I do a lot of operational and mentorship for small businesses. I do probably, I push for the C, for small businesses to start out with mm -hmm. a CBE. Mm -hmm. it, but that what the, the CBE program does is set aside small local businesses. If the district government can set aside, let's use the 28%, 28% of the open positions that they have in DCHR to returning citizens, that pool of employment, one, we don't have to worry about bonding. Two, we don't have to worry about, um, you still have your traditional 90 day probationary period. You don't have to worry about the rejection of the process of the background checks. You go through some, but most of them are public trust. Um, and it's just an easier, seamless option that the district can provide for us, just like they set, set aside 28% of federal dollars that they get to set aside business. They can set aside 28% of their open positions in DC government alone, and you have an open pool of employment. I took notes. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, <clears throat> I 
Chairman, Chairman White, can, can I just say something right quick? Please do. Um, no, I'm I'm listening, and 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 I have so much experience in, with this specific issue right here, as far as employment. The best thing that we could do, best thing we could do, each prisoner from D.C. should have a tracking folder on them. Once they go into the prisons, we should be there um, immediately. The, the IDPs, individual developmental plans, because once they start getting that education and getting that rehabilitation early, it put less strain on us. And when I go to prisons, when I go to prisons, when I give my speeches, that's one of the things I tell my guys. I say, if 200 y'all coming out and we got 50 jobs, and all two on y'all don't have have no no experience in nothing. Then that's 150 people who ain't gonna get a job. Yep. Yeah. So I explained to them, take a bank because you know you can say what you want about BOP. BOP has enough stuff where as though you can get you some type of skill. You can get your GED. You can get a plumbing. You can get um electrician. You can get a trade. But it, it, it goes back to, and I, I, I got to keep saying that leadership matters. People going into the prisons with, with credibility that can speak to these issues. Every time I, I visit a prison, I'm not exaggerating, you can call VOP on this, and gave my speeches, the program is shot up like 80%. It shot up 80%. Why do you think the BOP allowed me to do what I did on parole? That was unheard of. Yeah, and I went to one of those programs, so I'm a, I'm yeah. a believer. Yeah, and I mean, that that's that's unheard of. Somebody been locked up 35 years with my background. I'm going back in, in the BOP facilities teaching, not only filming. That never happened before. Yeah. But the, the point I want to stick to this stick to the point. If we stick to the basic foundation of reentry, all this stuff take care of itself. And then and and and, and again, you you have to engage yeah. gauge the, the, the prisoners when they first get in prison. Everybody should have a tracking folder. And I want to go go somewhere with this. Um in my program. But one thing we required when we we kept our IDPs, our individual uh, tracking votes on on our on our members, we detailed the, the kids, the family structure. So now we know in in certain areas where the kids at. See, did you? We got to We got to be. A, a, I think a little bit more professional in how we get the data from the prisoners not for the police i want to make sure I, I i say that not for the police this is for us to help each other yeah let me so we and uh i had a bill i passed into law some four years ago now it, it came from returning citizens some some of the members of the commission at that time uh, were some of the ones that give me the recommendation there's a law in the books that requires uh, district government requires Morica to uh, start working on uh, reentry plans uh, one six months to one year before people are released. To your point, I understand we need to do it early. I understand, but but stay with me for this this challenge because maybe you can help advise. Uh, Morca has not been able to do that because they said that uh, the Federal Bureau of Prisons will not give them. Uh, the information on who is incarcerated where and when their release dates are, uh, because they don't meet the sort of, you know, law enforcement agency requirements. So Morka has not been able to implement this. I, I'm with you. I think the lack of sort of training, tracking, reentry planning is really, really hurting us in a big way. Uh, do, do you see a way that Morka can get this information on 
all or most of our incarcerated residents throughout the BOP. I'm gonna just be blunt. I'm gonna just you could take it, boss lady. Go ahead. <laughs> we could do it through a FOA if we had to. But if we had that's but we can do it through a FOA. But I think that what the point is missing is that we need the relationship with the prison. If we have the relationship with the prison, the case managers, each inmate entered in, that enters into the Bureau of Prison is given a case manager. A case manager changes, does not change unless they leave the prison, but they do not change. You have, if you have a relationship with individual district residents at that particular facility, your intake clerks, which are at currently that you already have at Morca, could take A through Z, A through D, D, four, four or five by letters. In each letter, they have a relationship with the team managers. They can get those with case managers, um, release dates, what training they're doing, what, what training they should be doing, even if they do, because to Mr. Henry's point, the, you have these training programs in BOP, but then you come home and I don't know how to transfer from my West Virginia because my, I'm in, I got this HVAC certification in the state of West Virginia or in the state of whatever state I'm, Illinois, yeah. Pennsylvania. I need to know how to transfer my, my license, but we could do that on our end. But again, and do that within six months. So by the time that they're released, they have their state certifications here and they are immediately able to yeah. go into employment. But again, that comes from establishing a relationship between the district, whichever entity that might be, whether that be council, whether that be at the commission level or at the worker level, I see more beneficial at the worker level, but with the relationship with Bureau of Prisons. There you go, Ms. Henry. I want to want to chime in one more time on this and I'm not, I just want to just, um, I had no problem with that. I had no problem with that. Um, with what you just said, uh, Chairman, I had no problem with that. And it all goes back to, like I say, leadership matters and connectivity. The Bureau of Prisons, um, when they, when they, when they locked in on me, they locked in on me for this reason only. The length of time I've been in prison, the programs, and then the, my character. And that's what it's all about. If I could go back in the BOP with my background, they was they was hiring me as a GS-13 with my background, a federal employee. It's all about character. They couldn't get it. I bet you I could get it. And they I, all I bet can you, get I, it. I, I, I think huh? it's just like you said, I, I, to, to this point, look at it this way, Council Member White. It is a case manager's job. If we're doing the case management, <laughs> guess what? A BOP, you know, case manager probably, you know, makes less than a hundred thousand, depending on where they are. And you're gonna take six, five to six people off of their caseload. They will be more than happy to give you, <laughs> give you give the reentry the reentry coordinators, the reentry coordinators is is the better is the best source because that's their job. Well, okay. I mean, starting if we do a starting point, when I say this, I know what you're saying because they you don't get your you don't get assigned that until six months to release. But I mean, oh, if nice we're trying, talking about gotta, tracking eighteen months to a year, the case yeah. manager would be the person that we would need the contact with to enable to start to process. BOP has a new director. She is phenomenal. She's about that life. <laughs> and I'm saying that literally. She, she's, she's progressive. She's about that life. Yeah. And um, all the things, all the things I'm saying, and I'm going to just keep saying it, Chairman, leadership matters and it's connectivity. Those, those, that is the re the reasons we have these problems in DC. Leadership and connectivity. The mayor deserves better, you deserve better, and DC deserves better. Again, you know, the mayor put a lot of money behind this stuff in certain areas and a certain political will. And I'm just I'm just saying this to, to, to say that. 
you know, like we deserve better in DC. And I, I, and, I, and I and I and I appreciate what what you said. But we deserve better. Leadership matters. It matters, especially with us. Because if you ain't about that life, then you ain't respected in the mind. <laughs> it's like okay, you know, I'm just. I just want to just keep putting that out there, connectivity and leadership, man. Because that those are the two things is what's going to bring everything together. I appreciate it. Um, I am uh, I, I'm excited about the work ahead for um, the the commission. Of, of course, that requires keeping momentum and, and people being and staying engaged. Uh, if this group remains engaged, I think what you'll be able to do even just over the next year is going to be pretty phenomenal. As you all know, uh, I stand ready to uh, to to assist from the council side. Um, and so uh, I just think we have a, a pr pretty significant window to, to, to get some really great things done. Uh, and I think we have the right people around the table. So. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about these renominations. My challenge to you is let's let's keep using this window of opportunity while we have it, including this new uh, BOP director, because I will say historically uh, under both Democrat and, and Republican presidents, uh, the district has not had a great relationship with BOP. They have not been great at, uh, as I understand, uh, sort of uh, being open to developing a relationship. Uh, I believe that we have turned that corner and for, well, we don't know how long that that's going to last. So while while we have it, um, let's let's get that done. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, let me just ask you, uh, Chairperson uh, Dasher, the <clears throat> one of the key requirements for the commission is that it's uh, supposed to release an annual report with its recommendations. Uh, the, that report is extremely helpful for the mayor and for the council, for the public. I also think it pushes the commission to say, okay, what are we focused on? And, and, and you know, identifying what you'll be, be going to be focused on and, and, and pushing those things through the finish line. Uh, unfortunately, the commission has struggled to meet that, that report requirement. Is this something that you are prioritizing uh, to, uh, to, to get done? Absolutely. We started last month. Um, it is, we've now built a subcommittee um, structure in our, for our commission that we, we will make sure that that component, that subcommittee is strictly for legislative and compliance matters. So, Excellent. yes. Excellent. I, I appreciate it. Uh, one thing to think about in the future, uh, I know, you know, we work hard to give the commission a budget, but I also think there's some really talented people who might do this work pro bono. Um, we may think about trying to get a consultant for the commission to, to assist in, in, in your work um, and, uh, you know, helping to make sure sort of the, you know, taking some of the pressure off the report, but also the sort of strategic thinking. Um, I, I, I reach out to a lot of people. I have an idea, but, you know, having an idea and figuring out the most efficient way to get it done uh, is, is something all of us need assistance with. And uh, when you have the folks around the table with their ideas, you know, might make sense to bring in a consultant or two who can really help, you know, add to, to what you all have. So something to think about. And if uh, to the extent you need my assistance with that or anything else, uh, certainly let me know. And, and I'm there. Thank you so much. Awesome. So I, I do want to thank again, uh, our nominees and um, uh, all who tuned into this very important roundtable. For anyone who would like to submit testimony but was not able to testify today, uh, written testimony is encouraged and will be made part of the official record. So if you're interested in submitting testimony, please email it to the Committee on Government Operations and Facilities at facilities at dccouncil.us. The record for this roundtable will close on Thursday, December 15th, 2022, so submit testimony before then. With that, the business before this committee is concluded. The time is now 1.28 p.m., and this roundtable is adjourned. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. See you this evening, Thank gentlemen. You.